so the apologies the microphone is switched off we cannot hear what he's saying so thanks to the organizers I'm delighted to be able to contribute to the future of this island. Now, the dialogue here is, we're talking about maximum utilization of organic matter. So what do we want? Quality compost. That's our end goal. I'm going to look at current requirements and also how legislation has evolved and how we are going to be able to maintain good quality standards in our compost. So before I talk about compost quality, <clears throat> I'd like to first take a look at urban waste in Spain. We have some figures from 2013 from the Ministry. We can see that reject fraction is 82% of all urban waste. We look at sorting of paper and cards, this is 5%. Glass, 3.4%. Mixed packaging, 26 And green points, 3.6%. And then we have bio waste. This is 4%. This 4% is about 800,000 tons a year. So, what do we do with these 21.2 uh, million tons in Spain? Total amount. Okay, again, this is data from the Ministry for 2015. First, we... 3% uh, go to facilities for classifying, and then we have 2.7%, which are the bio-waste composting plants, and then we have 37.3%. These are the sorting compost facilities. Then we have triage biomethanization plants, 16.5%, and... This is part of the whole treatment, and then we have incineration plants, 9%, and then we have landfill. This is 30.7%, so that's a breakdown overall. So, looking at bio-waste, in Spain we have 41 compost facilities. This gives us an average of nearly 14,000 tonnes per year per plant. That's um, 570 tonnes per year. And we have mixed waste, which we compost in 67 plants, has a total of 7.9 million tonnes per year. So we have this 30.7%. That's what is directly put in landfills. But then if we look at reject or indirect fraction, if you look for 2013, the figure is 51.9%. This is landfill. Uh, you can see 60% on the charts when we compare to other European countries. This is 60% that ends up in landfills. Now, in Spain, let's take a look at bio waste once again. 50. 1% of bio-waste composting capacity is in Catalonia. We have 20 facilities there. 840,000 tons of bio-waste per year. This is what we're talking about. Uh, and how do we deal with this? Well, first of all, we have an anaerobic digestion progress, and then we have composting. 2013, through anaerobic digestion, we proce processed 272,000 tons of bio-waste. This is a proportion of the 21.2 million tons altogether. And 51% of this 
is dealt with in Catalonia. Uh, and then we have the anaerobic digestion figures at the end, which is a small part really still. So that's what we do and that's how we deal with a moist presence. So what are, is the legislation in place? What are the requirements that we need to comply with when we make compost? Well, in Spain, we have the Royal Degree 506 stroke 2013. And we have the Order AAA 2564 slash 2015. And we have various annexes associated. So what does this mean? Well, we have a new law on compost production. This basically tells us what requirements we have to comply with to create quality compost. Then we have the organic amendment. And in this amendment, we have five different types of compost. We have organic compost, organic vegetable compost, we have uh, manure compost and vermicompost. These are different areas. Now, looking closer at the compost amendment in the Royal Decree. We have organic material, uh, hydrogen content, and then we have gravel and stones. This uh, requirement here is 2% per surface area. 2015, 5% impurity was established as a maximum uh, quantity, amount, proportion. And then finally, which is a very significant part of this Royal Decree, are the um, heavy metal limits. We have class A, class B, class C. And here we have the heavy metal limits for each class, cadmium, copper, nickel, lead, zinc, mercury, and chrome. So these are the requirements. But what's the reality in situ, in the treatment plants themselves? We have another law, law 22 uh, slash 2011, uh, in this law, uh, certain requirements established with regards to sorting. Specifically, here, they try to encourage proper sorting. 50% paper, bio-waste, paper, glass, plastics, metals, bio-waste, and other recyclable fractions. Obviously, viability is key. This same law contains a definition of compost. Se considera compost el producto obtenido a partir de la Here we define compost uh, in the organic amendment of this law, basically to do with organic waste fraction. So this is our legal definition of what compost is contained in Spanish law. Now, Obesa, we have 40 different uh, composting plants in France, Portugal, and Spain. So what we've done is we've tried to analyze the situation in these plants. We're trying to look at the different parameters. We have given information from what we consider to be representative. Uh, plants in terms of operation and in terms of uh, production. We've calculated the annual average concentration of heavy metals and you can see all the figures on the slide. Chromium, plum, nickel, copper, mercury, Line, line. Uh, the red line is the limit for B class and class A is the limit for uh, it's the green line is limit for class A. So you can see that we have separated by type of substrate and by bio waste. And here in the blue circles, we can see the results of sorting of organic bio waste. And here in the other circles, we can see the results from the door-to-door -door collection system that we have in uh, La Blana district. So, 
these composts in particular comply with all the requirements that have been established with regards to uh, fraction collected door to door. And in fact, they have very low concentrations of heavy metals. We can see that there is no problem, therefore, in the compost that's collected via a door to door system. Only one minute. Yeah, 10 minutes is really not very long. You're absolutely right on that point. So, so let's look into our crystal ball. What's going to happen in the future? We need to look at the end of life condition of our waste. We need to look at heavy metal contents in the future, at the end of the life cycle. Uh, and this is the yellow line. This is a limit somewhere between class A and class B. Heavy metals, we can see that some plants have problems with their heavy metal limits, but it's not a global problem. Now we've seen the heavy metals. Now we're going to look at impurities. We have three large plants here, by way of illustration, where we do form composting. And here we analyze impurities, glass, metals, plastic, so on and so forth. And we've compared our limits with Spanish legislation. We have no problem because we are far below the uh, legally stipulated number. In fact, as low as 0.49% sometimes. So we can see that if we look at end of waste criteria for biodegradable waste subjected to biological treatment in Spain, that we are doing pretty well in Spain, but if we compare to European legislation, perhaps we are not quite meeting the requirements. This means that we need to work more in the elimination of uh, impurities or improve sorting systems. Now, let's take a look at our MOR compost plants. Look at our fractions. We can see that some comply with regulations, some don't. Obviously, this is when we're working alongside hotels. Some hotels are pretty good at sorting, but some contaminate their waste with all kinds of impurities. So, let's look at the FORM plants. Let's look at the limits in legislation. Two or three months ago, a draft regulation for uh, Label C and fertilizers was laid down by the European Commission, and here they established certain limits that we need to stick to. And here we can see that no more than five grams per kilogram of dye matter of macroscopic impurities in the form of glass, metal, and plastics above two millimeters. This is what we need to be complying with. And we're not quite meeting the stipulated limits we need to improve with glass and combined but as we can see that the we need to look at the date that's five years after the date of application of the regulation so what do we have here looking into the future not 0.49 percent is the figure for mixed waste for impurities, so we're not doing too well. Now, if we look at the red circles, we can see that we're not quite uh, complying with the legislative limits. When, therefore, what are we going to do to improve our compost and to um, filter out the impurities? Well, what we need to do is work better in the fields. We need to improve collection, we need to improve sorting. Everybody's spoken about this in great detail, obviously. Uh, but the problem is, is that people don't know exactly how much we pay when we process waste. I think people need to know and understand this better. We spoke about it this morning, but I'd like to repeat. We also need to set up uh, equipment so that we can reduce the impurities not something I can look in, in great detail now because I don't have time. 
And what we need to do when we reduce these impurities, we need to identify the equipment that will allow us to reduce glass and metal uh, components in the final compost by 60 percent. So we really do need to find ways of doing this systematically. So what are we doing at Urbacer? Well, we have an R&D center. Um, this is our technological research center in Zaragoza. We invested six million euros in this center in various different pilot projects. We have our own laboratory, we have pre-treatment, we have um, leachate and smell treatment, and we have energy recovery uh, processes and composting. And in the center we are also testing new equipment so that we can find out precisely how much waste we can eliminate from our compost so we can improve the final end product. So what are our conclusions? The European draft laws are more restrictive than current Spanish legislation and not all compost complies with the limits that a business stipulated by the European Union and Urbacel has therefore decided to take a proactive step to work with compliance with limits in the future. Thank you very much.